Welcome back to another coaching one-on-one -on, -one on the Boom Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today, doing one of the coaches' favorite old-time debates, the odd front versus the even front, 3-4 versus the 4-3. And so we're going to get into that today. Um, as if you probably know if you've been listening for any amount of time, I'm not a fan of the 3-4, uh, not a fan of the odd front. Um, and so we're going to get into that a little bit, but I'll start off by saying... Like I usually say, uh, this is from my experience. This is from my point of view. This definitely, again, is not me saying what's fact and what's fiction. I'm not telling you what's true. This is just how, you know, uh, it comes from my experience. And so other coaches definitely feel free to chime in and uh, all that good stuff. Um, number two, I completely realized that the percentage of the league that runs nickel formation is in the 70s, I believe. Um, very high usage of the nickel in today's NFL. I understand that. Um, but there's still some different things as well that we will talk about that influence that. So uh, I do acknowledge and recognize that, but uh, I'm still going to go ahead. So um, as I mentioned, uh, not a big fan of the odd front. So we run... Uh, I front currently with the Chicago Bears. Prior to that, uh, Fangio was in the 3-4. The 3-4 switch came over when John Fox took over. Um, prior to that, through the love years, we were even front. And then uh, with Tressman, who had Mel Tucker running it, we were even front, but it was a little different. And, you know, that there are some reasons behind that as well. And so um, that's kind of what the trajectory has been. And so I've always been an advocate of going to the uh, even front. And so we'll kind of get into it. So the way I chose to set this up today, I wanted to do like an Earl Lacker and a, uh, Ray Lewis type thing. But uh, they don't have film from like, you know, 2005, 2006. I want to get some good years. And then the film they did have, you know, it's not that great. And so you think the film's not great right now. It wasn't great five or six years ago either. So I want to go with some current that looked a little better. And so what I'm going to do is use Aaron Donald for the even front. Um, and I know he's currently technically in the odd front, but he was in the even front before McVay got there. So we're going to look at some of that. And then I'm going to use Snack Harrison for the odd front uh, back when he was with the Giants. So uh, we'll just use a few plays just to illustrate some points. And so that's what we'll be doing. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and get this started. So we'll start off with the even front. Uh, we'll start with the uh, Aaron Donald film. And so just going to let it play a little bit so they could get set up. And so what we're talking about, number one, and this is what this is more so a nickel. Um, but this is what you'll get as as an even front in today's age. Um, even front. So to again, be the very basics, uh, even front is the defensive line. So three, four, four, three, that's D line linebackers. So three linemen, four linebackers or four D linemen, three linebackers, or you got a nickel, which is really a four, two, which is four D linemen, two linebackers. And then you got like usually an extra corner. So anyway, the big thing for me number one is about the run game and I know some people are like it's a passing league I still don't agree with that especially the way people use it um you know people tell you the run game is not that important I still believe most coaches will tell you that uh they want to stop the run first because then that can set up everything and look no further than our offense uh yes you it's not impossible it's like <laughs> so you'll have some touchdowns or a good play and people like see see like that's just one success out of many failures and so you see how we are when we sputter with the run game uh the run game definitely helps and i think always will and so with an even front the thing that i like number one more than anything else is that it gives you gap uh, responsibility, your gap sound, as they say. Um, for me, the way I was mentored, the way I like to coach football, I like to be gap sound, meaning, and I like to be sound, period, meaning that I want to make sure our numbers are balanced to each side, which is a different discussion. But as far as gaps, I want to make sure we got a defender for each gap. So right now, 
This is uh, the defense's right A gap. I know that this defender, and depending on the scheme, but for the sake of argument, he has this gap. I know for our left gap on defense, he has that gap. I know for our left B gap, Aaron Donald has this B gap. I know my uh, defensive end has the C gap. On the other side, this linebacker has that B gap. The other defensive end has this C gap. And so I know that, you know, I wouldn't say no matter what happens, but for the most part, these are the gaps we're going to be assigned. Now, there's some things they can do with movement where the gaps move, and then there's rules to it, like if he, what if he pulls? What if he pulls that way? What if he goes past me and goes to the linebacker? There's different rules there, but for the most part, I know what gap I'm defending. And so what that allows you to do is, for the most part, no matter what the offensive line does, I know what I'm responsible for so I can get up field and I can do what I have to do and take care of that gap. The other thing that it does, as I mentioned just now, it allows you to go up field um, and penetrate. Now, that's different philosophically for different coaches, but for the most part, uh, you're going to find that Oh, I wouldn't say for the most part, but I would say for me and for some coaches, they like penetration. Some coaches will tell you get up two uh, yards upfield and then you need to settle down because they don't want people throwing screens behind you or whatever or draw play, whatever. Some people just give you the green light. You could go upfield as much as you want, cause havoc and penetrate. Either way, those are what you're going to get more so with an even front where you can go upfield. And so we'll see that play out in this play. Um, we're going to have uh, the Saints again versus the Rams. And this is going to be a run play. And so I know it's going to slide. I know it take them this long to hike the ball. But uh, so the play plays out. We see Aaron Donald coming up field. He beats his man, beats the second man, and ends up making a big tackle for loss. Now, this is significant, as I mentioned, because what he's allowed to do is to penetrate upfield. And so he can come in and make that play. Now, if you were talking about an odd front, which we'll get to in a little bit, it's not so much about getting off the man and coming up fielding a gap. It's more so about occupying the man and making sure that he can't block the linebacker. But on an even front, I can get off my block. I don't care about him. I don't care about the linebacker. I care about my gap. And so if I come up field and I get in the backfield and the play is coming to me towards my gap, as long as I didn't leave my gap, I'm fine. And so it'd be a different thing if Aaron Donald decided to loop all the way around and come up field. Now he loses his gap. He takes somebody else's gap. It's a mess. But he's in his gap. I'm still in my gap. So I get to do what I want in that gap, basically. And so now I have the freedom as a D lineman. When I line up, I know I have that freedom to line up and go. And it didn't rewind like I tried to do it. A little jerk, but whatever. And so this next play will be the same or not the exact same thing, but it'll illustrate the point as well is that you know where your gaps are. And so looking at it, from this angle, again, I know C gap, uh, A gap, 26 B gap, 52 A gap, 99 B gap, 94 or whatever number that is, C gap. Now, there is a little thing with the D gap when you got tight ends and that's, you know, more inside football. But for the most part, we know where our gaps are, where gaps sound. And if, even if we're running a stunt, so let's say he's going to uh, cross here to the B gap and he's going to cross over to the A gap. Well, now I know I got this A gap and I know I got that B gap. The linebacker's job is to make the D line right. So if the D line have a stunt or a game, if he's going to crash over to the A gap and he's going to wrap around to that A gap, well, now he has this B gap and he has that B gap. It's all coordinated so that it's about gaps. Everything we do is about gaps. Even if it's a blitz, we know it's about gaps. I'm not going to tell 26 to blitz this with 90. 
we're not going to go in the same gap. If I do a blitz and he twists all the way out here and 93 twist inside, then I'm going to go here and then now my gap is here. Whatever it is. Or if you blitz everybody, now the safety knows that he has a gap. And so everything is about being gap sound. And so we see this play out even with the motion and all that. Now, one thing you will see is that uh, when they motion 90 bounces out to a B gap, and this is the NFL, this is higher level football. As I talked about with game planning, they might have a thing where if the tight end is on your side or if the tight end is away from the back, then we want to put a three, uh, we want to put a three technique there. And so whatever rules they have for that week, he saw the tight end coming, so he bounced to the B gap. Aaron Donald then move. Maybe they shift down towards the tight end, whatever it is, but he fakes the motion and comes back. And so once he goes back, then 90 is going to go back to his a gap so that's just football we don't know what the call is but anyway so they're all in their gaps and then when the play starts we see everybody in their gap now again 90 has that a gap he could attack that man c gap we got an attack out here c gap the linebacker knows and that's Ogletree back when he was with them. The linebacker knows where his gap is as well. And so we'll slow it down to show you. So he knows he has that A gap. So when it opens up, he steps up to the A gap. Even with the tight end there, he steps up. He's in his A gap. Now he knows he has that B gap. Now the linebacker might not be that great because he's just sitting here in the hole. But whatever. Either way, he knows to step up. This next linebacker steps up. Aaron Donald makes the play because he's off his man. Now, if you watch Aaron Donald, you focus in on number 99. He's still in his B gap. He makes that play, but he still comes up. He doesn't run around to go get the running back. He gets off his man, comes up through the B gap, sees the play, makes a play. But that running back has nowhere to go because everybody stepped up into that gap. And that's what you're talking about with um, the even front is that it's that gap responsibility. So now we're going to jump over to the odd front real quick. And now the odd front is very different. So we'll see them line up. And this is still an odd front, even though it's a little weird. So odd front, really, you got these three men. And what they are, they're in the nickel or big dime, whatever. Usually as in 3-4, you have these three men, one linebacker outside, another linebacker outside. In this case, they replace one linebacker with a defensive back. But it's still the same thing because you can see these three together. They're the three down linemen. He's an outside linebacker, technically. And these are the two stack backers. So the difference is, is what you got called a two gap. So with even front, it's your job to get in your gap, A, B, C, whatever. With uh, uh, I front, is more of a two-gap scheme. Two-gap means that you're really trying to attack this man. And so usually you'll see the nose head up or you'll see these uh, DNs in a four and their head up. And what they want to do is engage with the lineman. And when they engage with the lineman, on a, a level where they got good extension and not being blocked. Now I can go left. I could go right. And so that's what we call two gapping. You're extending, you're holding your ground. You're giving yourself the ability to go to the left or the right gap. And so you could cover two gaps with, or, and so what happens is they're trying to cover more gaps with less linemen and the edge still has the edge on both sides. Now, what happens with the linebackers is they don't have a particular gap. It's still the same job. Make the D-line right. So if I engage with this lineman and for whatever reason I decide to take the left, now this linebacker needs to replace and take the right. And really what happens is you just got floaters as linebackers. They kind of make a decision based on what the defensive line is doing. And so we'll go through in slow motion to see how that looks. But... Two gapping is really what you'll see with the odd front. 
And I think this play does a good job of kind of showing you what that looks like. So now at this point, they're just trying to hold up these players. They're trying to engage, not lose any ground. They're not necessarily trying to penetrate like Aaron Donald was. They're not trying to come up field and get off their gap. They're trying to get hands on these linemen and occupy them. And so, as I mentioned before, with a good nose is that two of these guys need to block him. If one of these guys decides to creep up to the linebacker, then I need to beat my man one-on-one. -on -one. And you see that's what Snack does. Because Snack has good extension, so now he's really two-gapping. And really, that's what everybody's doing. They're just holding the line, which is really what it is. You're holding the line, making sure that you're not getting pushed off your block, you're not moving downfield so the running back doesn't have anywhere to go. So they give a weak double team. So now at this point, Snack is going to two gap where his extension and he's got good leverage. So now I could come off my block, come into this gap. Or if the running back bounces this way, I come off my block, come into that gap. Now a good D lineman isn't going to, if he gets off his block right now and penetrates, this running back is going to hurry up and bounce it. If he gets off his block and penetrates to the right, then the running back is going to stay up the middle. And so what a good D lineman is going to do is going to keep pushing his man and wait. He's going to keep waiting to the last moment to get off his block, then make the tackle. And that's what you see Snack does. He waits to the, he gets up to the line, he holds his man, and then he makes a tackle. And that's good work in the 3-4. Um, not what I what I personally prefer, though. And so, let's skip past this next play. And then, so, this is the play I want to look at uh, again with the eye front, kind of looking at how that works out for us. And so, again, we got three down linemen, two edge players. This is more of a traditional 3-4 that you'll see with uh, two outside linebackers per se. And so, again, you'll see the movement. This is a zone where the, the line is moving now. The line is trying to get you to move. They're trying to move the gaps. And with a 3-4, you'll see the linebackers. Not that they're great linebackers, but you'll see the, how they react. They'll react because they're reacting to the backfield. They're not necessarily looking for a gap. They're just seeing what the running back is doing and the uh, blocking if there's a fullback back there. They're looking at the handoff and seeing what that looks like because now they're really more chasers. They're chasers and floaters. They're going to react to how people are blocking, and they're going to run to the ball. And it's the D-line's job basically to get in the way. The more that you get in the way in the odd front, the freer your linebackers are and the freer they can make plays. So Snack is not trying to run down that play, as you can see. Snack Harrison is trying to grab and get in the way of these two linemen so that these two linemen have to block him and not block his linebacker. And you'll see that play out with the zone. And that's really what the 3-4 is, the, or the eye fronts. You're really trying to get in the way of people, and then get off the block at the last second if you got a chance to make a play. Now, that play, the backside ends up making the play, but you see what I mean. So, um, all that to say that for me, when you're talking about playing a run, when you're talking about being gap sound, the even front's a lot better for me, and it allows you to penetrate. So, when you're talking about pass game, and you're talking about a nickel, then you're talking about players that are used to coming up field, players that are used to looking to get off blocks, players that are looking to penetrate. Now, people will screen you and they'll delay and they'll draw to take advantage of you, but you still get to wreak havoc if you're doing your job right. With an odd front like we have now, the problem is you just, even if you're in a nickel, which is an even front, you have players that you're drafted that are bigger, less athletic, stronger, but they're used to occupying blocks. They're not used to getting off blocks. And the problem is, is that if you're not as strong 
you can get off blocks. Aaron Donald's freak, freakishly strong, but even though he's still smaller, and if you got great hand technique and you're fast, you can get off blocks, whether they're bigger or not, whether they're faster or not. You can get off blocks if you got great technique. As a bigger guy on the out front, you could be strong, but if they're stronger, you're done. There is no alternative. If they're stronger and they move you, which we've seen Nick Williams, we've seen Nakeem Hicks, we've seen Eddie Goldman, we've seen all these guys. Once they get moved, you you moved. Like that's it is what it is because you're used to occupying space and occupying blocks. And you got guys like Hakeem Hicks, JJ Watt that can do both. But we're talking about in the grand scheme of things, when you draft for out front. You just more so have guys that aren't used to getting off blocks, that aren't used to penetrating, and the gaps aren't always sound. So then you got guys like Roquan and Trevathan that chase the ball, but a lot of times you could be hurt up the middle because you have less linemen and you're trying to play two gaps with one person. And if you play against a team that is too much, uh, you know, overpowering, you're not going to be able to do that. But the thing is, with an even front, even if they're bigger, stronger, whatever, if everybody plays their gap, if you fight, claw, if you fall down and keep crawling in your gap, that's one place where the offense can't run. And that's why I like it, because it's more assignment sound. So anyway, go to the comment section. Let me know what you think. Share it around. Get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for listening.